Southwest Utah has Bryce Canyon National Park and American National Park. The main attraction of the park is Bryce Canyon, which, in spite of its name, is actually a group of enormous natural amphitheaters located on the eastern side of the Pounsogunt Plateau. Hoodoos are geological formations that distinguish Bryce and are created by stream erosion and frost weathering of the sedimentary rock of the river and lake bottom. Park visitors are treated to breathtaking views of the red, orange, and white rocks, sitting at a far higher elevation than neighboring Zion National Park, Bryce Canyon. National Park is far smaller. Between 2,400 to 2,700 meters separate the rim at Bryce. Pioneer Mormons founded the Bryce Canyon region in the 1850s, and it bears Ebenezer Bryce's name, who homesteaded there in 1874. Congress renamed the region surrounding Bryce Canyon a national park in 1928, after President Warren G. Harding had first declared it a national monument in 1923. Due mostly to its more isolated position, Bryce National Park has far fewer visitors than Zion National Park, almost 4.3 million in 2016, or Grand Canyon National Park, almost 6 million in 2016, while covering 35,835 acres, 55,9992 mi, 14 to 502 hectares, 14502 km2. A 107,794 increase over the previous year brought two 679 478 recreational visitors to Bryce Canyon in 2018. Situated in the Colorado Plateau geographic region of North America, Bryce Canyon National Park crosses the southeast edge of the Ponsagunt Plateau, west of the Ponsagunt Faults. Ponsagunt is Paiute for home of the beaver. Arriving from the plateau portion of the park, Parkgoers gaze over the edge of the plateau toward a valley that contains the Fault and the Pariah River, which is Paiute for muddy or elk water immediately beyond it. Bounding the other side of the valley is the Kaiparowitz Plateau. Bryce Canyon is not a canyon technically since it was not created by erosion that started from a central stream. Large amphitheater-shaped landforms have been eroded out of the Cenozoic-aged rocks of the Ponsagunt Plateau instead. Because of this erosion, up to 200-foot, 60-meter tall, delicate, and multicolored pinnacles known as hoodoos were created. Within the park, a sequence of amphitheaters runs more than 20 miles, 30 km, north to south. The biggest is the 12 miles, 19 km year long, 3 miles, 5 km in wide, and 800 feet, 240 mile deep Bryce Amphitheater. About 25 miles, 40 km to the west on the Markagunt Plateau in Cedar Breaks National Monument, are amphitheaters with hoodoos in the same formation but at a higher height. At 9105 feet, 2775 in Rainbow Point is the highest point in the park and the conclusion of the 18-mile, 29km -er scenic drive. Views from that point include the Henry Mountains, the Vermilion Cliffs, the White Cliffs, the Aquarius Plateau, and the Bryce Amphitheater. Yellow Creek, which leaves the park in the northeast, is the lowest point at 6,620 feet, 2,020 mi-m. The history of early human occupation in the Bryce Canyon region is little understood. There have been people in the region for at least 10,000 years, according to archaeological surveys of the Ponsagunt Plateau and Bryce Canyon National Park. Southern of the park, there are several thousand-year-old basketmaker Anasazi relics discovered. Additionally discovered are artifacts from the Fremont culture, up to the middle of the 12th century and the Anasazi Pueblo period. About the same period that the other cultures disappeared, the Paiute Native Americans moved into the nearby plateaus and valleys. These Native Americans supplemented their diet with certain farmed goods in addition to hunting and gathering for the most part. The hoodoos or pinnacles in Bryce Canyon became the subject of a legend among the nearby Paiute. They held that hoodoos were the legend people that the cunning coyote had turned to stone. According to one older Paiute, the hoodoos are known in his culture as Ankaku was a wits, which translates to red-painted faces. The far-flung and difficult-to-reach region was not explored by European Americans until the late 18th and early 19th century. Mormon scouts came to the region in the 1850s to assess its possibilities for population, grazing, and agricultural growth. Leading the region's first significant scientific mission in 1872 was U.S. Army Major John Wesley Powell, Part of a wider survey of the Colorado Plateaus, Powell and a group of geologists and map makers surveyed the Severe and Virgin River region. Many Paiute place names were preserved by his map makers. Few Mormon pioneers trailed after and made an effort to establish themselves along the Pariah River east of Bryce Canyon. The Canara Cattle Company began grazing cattle there in 1873, 
thought his carpentry abilities would be valuable in the area. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sent Scottish immigrant Ebenezer Bryce and his wife Mary to settle land in the Perea Valley. Living just beneath Bryce Amphitheater, the park's primary hoodoo collection, was the Bryce family's choice. Bryce supposedly believed that the amphitheaters were a hell of a place to lose a cow and grazed his cattle inside what are now park boundaries. Along with a canal to water his animals and irrigate his fields, he constructed a road to the plateau to harvest timber and firewood. Not long after, other settlers began referring to the odd location as Bryce's Canyon, which was subsequently formally named Bryce Canyon. The settlers attempted building a water diversion route from the severe river drainage after the last of the Paiutes were driven from the region by a combination of drought, overgrazing, and flooding. The Bryce family was among the majority of the settlers that fled the region after that attempt failed. In 1880, Bryce relocated his family to Arizona. The surviving colonists excavated a 10-mile, 16-kilometer ditch into Tropic Valley from the East Fork of the Severe. First reported to the public in 1916, these picturesque locations were featured in magazine pieces by the Union Pacific and Santa Fe Railroads. Amphitheaters at Bryce Canyon were promoted by individuals such as Forest Supervisor J.W. Humphrey, and by 1918, writings published nationally also contributed to the enthusiasm. But there were few lodgings and difficult access to the isolated location, so visitors were few. In due course, Ruby Surrett, Harold Bowman, and the Perry brothers established touring services and modest homes in the region. Subsequently, Surrett was Bryce Canyon's first postmaster. Tourist numbers climbed gradually, and by the early 1920s, the Union Pacific Railroad was considering extending rail service into southwest Utah in order to handle more travelers. Concurrently, the harm overgrazing, logging, and uncontrolled tourism were doing to Bryce Canyon's delicate characteristics worried conservationists. Soon after the region became the focus of a protection effort, National Park Service Director Stephen Mather suggested that Bryce Canyon become a state park. But the Utah State Legislature and Governor campaigned for the region's national protection. Reluctant, Mather forwarded his suggestion to President Warren G. Harding, who on June 8, 1923, proclaimed Bryce Canyon a national monument. The same year, a road was constructed on the plateau to make views over the amphitheaters easily accessible. Built of regional stone and wood, Bryce Canyon Lodge was constructed between 1924 and 1925. In 1924, members of the United States Congress began work to convert Bryce Canyon's protective status from national monument to national park, therefore creating Utah National Park. Beginning in 1923, the Utah Parks Company spearheaded the process of giving the federal government control of both state and private property inside the monument. Four years later, the federal government purchased the remaining of the land inside the boundaries of the planned park. And on February 25, 1928, Bryce Canyon National Park was founded. President Herbert Hoover acquired a neighboring region south of the park in 1931, and in 1942, an extra 635 acres, 257 ha, were included. This increased the overall size of the park to its present 35835 acres, 14502 ha. The Civilian Conservation Corps finished the picturesque route known as Rim Road in 1934, up until 1956 when Bryce Canyon's first superintendent began work. The park was administered out of nearby Zion National Park. Deposition in the Bryce Canyon region is recorded from the latter half of the Cretaceous to the early half of the Cenozoic era. Around what is now the park, the ancient depositional ecosystem was varied. The warm, shallow seas of the advancing and retreating Cretaceous Seaway deposited the Dakota Sandstone and the Tropic Shale. Outcrops of these rocks can be seen just outside park boundaries. Delicate hoodoos in the park are carved from the vibrant Claren Formation which was deposited as sediments in a network of chilly streams and lakes between 63 and around 40 million years ago, the Paleocene and Eocene epochs. Different kinds of sediment were deposited as the river deltas and shoreline moved, and as the lakes grew shallower. Two significant uplift phases resulted in the creation of several additional formations, most of which were eroded away. Beginning from 70 million to 50 million years ago, the Laramide orogeny impacted all of Western North America. Along the way, this catastrophe closed the Cretaceous Seaway and contributed to form the Rocky Mountains. This rise claimed the formations known as Kuiperowitz, Waweep, and Strait Cliffs. The Colorado Plateaus were broken up into several plateaus with their unique uplift rate and faults separating them from one another 16 million years ago. 
Six, with this uplift, erosion eroded the severe river formation and the boat mesa conglomerate. Vertical joints resulting from this uplift gradually degraded preferentially. While the more robust white cliffs created monoliths, the soft pink cliffs of the Claren Formation were eroded to create freestanding pinnacles in badlands known as hoodoos. The yellows come from limonite, the purples from pyrolusite, NO2, and the brown, pink, and red hues from hematite. Walls, windows, arches, and natural bridges were also constructed. Soft, sedimentary rock makes up hoodoos, while a tougher, less prone to erosion stone cap protects the column from the environment. Among all the hoodoo concentrations on Earth is found at Bryce Canyon. Part of the Grand Staircase are the exposed formations in the park area. The Grand Canyon has the oldest members of this super sequence of rock units exposed. Zion National Park has the intermediate ones, and the Bryce Canyon region has the youngest. Every park has a little overlap in and around it. Within the park are about 400 native plant species. Elevation-wise, the park has three life zones. Little forests of juniper and pinyon pine predominate in the park's lowest sections, with manzanita, serviceberry, and antelope bitterbrush interspersed. Grown among waterways are willow, cottonwood, water birch, and aspen. Mid-elevations are covered in ponderosa pine forests, which include manzanita and bitterbrush as underbrush and blue spruce and Douglas fir in water-rich places. The forests of the Ponsagant Plateau consist of aspen, Engelmann spruce, Douglas fir, and white fir. Limber pine and ancient over the 600-year-old Great Basin bristlecone pine cling to the hardest places. Many animal species, including foxes, badgers, porcupines, elk, skunks, black bears, bobcats, and woodpeckers, find home in the woodlands and meadows of Bryce Canyon. Large creatures most often seen in the park are mule deer. Sometimes elk and pronghorn wander into the park. They have been reintroduced nearby. Three Endangered Species Act listed wildlife species, the Utah prairie dog, the California condor, and the southwestern willow flycatcher have parts of their habitat in Bryce Canyon National Park. The largest protected population of the endangered Utah prairie dog was reintroduced to the park for conservation purposes. Including swifts and swallows, the park is home to about 170 bird species. Though jays, ravens, nuthatches, eagles, and owls stay, most species go to warmer areas in the winter. Cougars, coyotes, and mule deer go to lower elevations in the winter. Hibernating over the winter are ground squirrels and marmots. Within the park are 11 species of reptiles and 4 species of amphibians. Reptiles include the striped whipsnake, short-horned lizard, side-blotched lizard, and great basin rattlesnake. Amphibians include the tiger salamander. Comprising lichens, algae, fungi, and cyanobacteria, the dark, lumpy, extremely slow-growing colonies of cryptobiotic soil are also found in the park. In concert, these creatures assist the soil, retain moisture, supply nitrogen, and prevent erosion. 